Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Alina Dom, a mom of four and an aspiring author. We are one month roughly postpartum right now and we are jumping into writing another book, book number two. If you would like all of the previous information and the idea that I have for this book and building onto a plot, then go ahead and head back to my other video. Um, this video specifically is going to be about researching. So we're just going to do some research. We're going to figure out some things that we need to know for the story, um, background, location, and I'm going to give you a few little tools that can kind of help you out as you get into this journey yourself. So let's just jump right in. All right, so research. Let's talk about it a little bit because the previous book that I wrote that I'm querying right now, and you can learn about that in the previous video a little bit, it was epic fantasy or high fantasy, not in this world, in a completely different world. And so the research component of it was very different from how this one is going to be since this is inner world. It's technically a historical fiction, historical fantasy, romance. I don't really know how to describe it yet because I probably need to work on it a little bit more so I know what it is. But it is historical and so I have to actually do some research to know this time period, what is this time period like, and what clothes are they wearing, where is this, what's the weather like, that kind of thing. There's a lot of things to learn about it. Whereas in my previous novel that I've written with my husband, because it was an epic fantasy, I didn't have to know all those things. I was just making them up. But that didn't mean that I didn't have to do research for it. So as part of my little example before we get into this book, I just want to bring up this book that I have. Can you see it? Yes, right there. Floriography. Um, I found this online and I just thought it was a beautiful book and it's all a, it's an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers by Jessica Rue and it just has these beautiful you can see that there beautiful photos I'll hide my face there we go beautiful photos and descriptions of each of these flowers and what they mean uh, what their significance is how they help um, there's the origin, the meaning, uh, what to pair with. So for instance, this is marigold and it says pair with willow to indicate sorrow at the loss of a loved one. Uh, rue to apologize for the pain that you've caused. And uh, part of the story in my epic fantasy is you have the Verdalia and they are a species or a type of people who are born from flowers in different seasons and depending on what season they're born in they have different magical abilities and so if they are born in spring on this earth which covers four moons um, then they have the ability to awaken flowers and use the properties of flowers to create an emotional reaction from the other Verdalia or peoples around them and so I wanted to have a book on hand to be able to reference it whenever they were making food with flowers or if they were making bouquets, um, anything like that. I wanted to have that on hand so that I could always kind of know what each flower meant, why would they choose to use this flower in this particular situation if they were using it to make a candy or if they were using it to make a bouquet for an event. Um, or garlands perhaps. Uh, they also preserve their flowers and will use them to make clothing and then the clothing that you wear is going to have an impact on how your interactions with people and how they respond to you um, and how you feel wearing it as well. And so it was kind of an interesting mechanic or an interesting uh, magic system in my story that I was using and I wanted to have a reference for it. So that's one way that you can kind of do research if you are doing fantasy. You just pick out little things in your story that you need to know something about and you apply it. So for example, I also use stones, the summer Verdalia. 
use stones and rocks and minerals and metals and woods and a lot of like earthy type things and they have kind of the same effect but they use them in totems they use them in uh, runes different things like that and so I once again needed some sort of reference so that I could use that in my magic and in my storytelling so that's one way you can do it if you're doing fantasy since we're doing a historic story or we are basing this in a historic time period, I need to do a little bit more research this time around. So we're gonna dive in and try to do that together. All right, guys, so we're gonna start in ChatGPT. So back in the day when I started writing this book, so over 10 years ago, uh, when I was just a young lass, uh, all I had at my disposal was Google and books pretty much and so I bought a few books which I'll show you in a minute uh, to do some research but other than that I was just googling stuff and ChatGPT is a great resource for doing quick research the thing is is it's good to do research you absolutely want to do research there are things that you should know absolutely to be able to write books and to do certain uh, cultures justice, that kind of thing, especially if you're doing something historical. However, when you're getting into your first draft, in my opinion, it is best to do the quickest research you can do to just jump in and get writing because you want to finish your first draft. A lot of us get caught up in the research phase and the last book I did, I have a huge actually i'm gonna look at it right now because i'm curious um how long it is but i have a oh oh yeah okay i have a presentation a powerpoint presentation that i did when i was doing my last book that i put together because i just wanted to have all of my information photos research whatever in one place and by the time i was done the PowerPoint presentation, let's see, it has 549 pages. So I just went way overboard. And I can tell you that I do not use like more than half of that information that I found. It doesn't matter. It's not useful. It just was me wasting time instead of getting to writing. Um, and ChatGPT for me has been really valuable. And okay, I can get my question down to exactly what I want to know, get the details that I need, and then move on and actually write. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. Um, the first thing that I wanted to look at is the time period of Scarborough Fair. So I'm going to tell ChatGPT I'm writing a novel uh, related to the song Scarborough Fair and the Elfin Knight. What time period and location are these songs based off of? And I'm just going to leave it at that to start because we can always add in questions and it kind of remembers what you're saying and whatnot. Both songs are rooted in medieval and early modern folklore and share common themes of courtly love, magic, and riddles. Therefore, setting your novel in the Middle Ages, specifically between the 14th and 18th century in Scarborough, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, aligns well with the historical context of these ballads. The blend of the historical setting with elements of folklore will enhance the mystical and traditional aspects of your story. So I like that it brings up courtly love, A, so that's something you can kind of play with, magic, which absolutely I want to play with, and riddles. I had not really thought of that before but it is kind of what's being used, especially in the Elfin Knight story um, or song, that there are these riddles that you have to kind of figure out so that you can escape. And I didn't really think of that before when I was starting to put this together. So I'm gonna add that to my notes, courtly love, magic, and riddles, because those are all kind of cool. So I have my notes here. I'm gonna add another note 
Courtly Love Magic Riddles. These are things we can kind of play with and I'm just, all of my ideas are going in green. So great, we're gonna look at roughly 14th to 18th century. I'm going to ask ChatGPT, what are some important lifestyle things that I should know about? to create a good setting for my characters in, let's say 16th century. Let's go right smack dab in the middle of the 14th to 18th century. Uh, Scarborough, Yorkshire, that will enhance the location of these events. For example, usually I try to give examples so ChatGPT knows kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm thinking clothing, I'm thinking weather, I'm thinking locations. Is there a beach nearby, forest, what a fair would have been like in this time period, etc. I always add etc. just in case there's other things that ChatGPT can think of that I didn't think of. Um, oh, and maybe peasant life experience and marriage expectations or something like that, something along those lines. Okay, so I've got a lot to work with right here. It has men's clothing, women's clothing, the materials that were often used, colors that you would often see. So we have greens, browns, and blues. Bright colors were expensive and less common among peasants. So in my previous video, I had said, I was seeing the color purple in the dress she was wearing, maybe something like that. And I'm starting to think that that will be something you will see when she is found with the elven knight. Maybe he gifts her a dress or something along those lines. Cause I really do love the idea of this purple that she's going to be wearing. But since I am thinking she's a peasant, it will not be something she wears normally. She will be in greens, browns, blues, natural dyes that they had. Weather, we are looking at mild winters, cool summers, rain was frequent, and coastal areas experienced strong winds. I can put that into the story as well, and I kind of want to. If we go to here, and we have this purple that I liked, I'm actually going to add in purple dress from Elfin Knight, question mark. These are all question marks. These are all things that I can throw in and use to create my outline and make it more interesting. So let's say purple dress from Elf and Night. Clothing will be brown, blue, or green. And wool is common. Let's green bubble that. Just another idea. Here's another idea. Weather. Lots of rain. Coastal areas have lots of wind. That'll be another idea that I can use over the course of the story to give. I feel like you read a lot of books and you don't see the weather changing or things happening. I mean, it might be winter or something, but the weather's not really used as much to push the story forward. And I feel like that could be something really cool. Like if she's trying to escape and it's a really windy night and that's, you know, making wind go through the trees and it's, you know, makes it a little bit creepy. Um, or it's raining and so she can't leave wherever she's being held by the alpha night at that moment um, because she would get really sick because it's raining and it's cold <laughs> there. Okay, so that's something we can start with. Garborough is known for its coastal location with sandy beaches. This would have been a significant feature impacting fishing and trade. So let's talk about that. Let's see, location, uh, beaches, fishing and trade. That would make sense why they would have a lot of trade since there's a fair that's there called the Scarborough Fair. So you would probably get people coming in from a lot of different places for this fair. Okay, moving on, let's see, forest. The nearby North York Moors provided woodland and moorland. Forests were a source of wood, game, and foraging. So we have forests, all stuff that I can kind of use in the story. She can go out foraging and come across the Alpha Knight. Um, it also says that uh, the no North York Moors and Woodland. Town layout. Medieval Scarborough had a castle, a market square, a narrow and narrow winding streets. The harbor would have been bustling with fishermen and traders. Okay, so there was a castle, a market square, and narrow winding streets. 
and you're also going to have a busy harbor. That's all the location information that I need for now. I'm going to add uh, Scarborough the Fair. I'm gonna add that there's entertainment such as music, jugglers, and tournaments. I like that. It does make me wonder if they would have done dances together, uh, like they would have had dances from the region that everybody knew. And so you would do those dances or you would get a partner and you would do the dance with the partner, that kind of thing. Uh, something that you could use. It is a romance novel after all. There, I don't know if I would call it a romance novel, but yeah, it probably will be a romance novel when I get done with it. Lifestyle. Again, these are just ideas. I'm just throwing anything. It's like spaghetti at the wall. Anything that you can throw out there, just what sticks and what can I use and how can I just make it more of an interesting story, put in more subplots, give the whole story, I mean, make it feel real, first of all. That's really what you wanna do is you wanna, you want your characters to be living in a world that was made for them, that they mold into, and you want your readers to feel like they're stepping right in. And so if you don't have some of these details mentioned or you get it wrong, then it can really pull people out of the story. And the other thing about it is you just want to be able to have more to use when you get kind of caught up in your writing process. Because I can tell you when you sit down to write and you just, there's nothing there. There's nothing better than having a list of just ideas and going, you know what, why don't we just, let's do this at the harbor for whatever reason. They do a lot of fishing, let's just, Let's do something at the harbor where they're fishing or somebody's fishing and they come across them. And what's the conversation that happens? And then your story can branch out into so many different places, which actually happened a lot with the last novel I wrote. So there's just other ways that it can push you to be more creative as you're writing. And it gets rid of that writer's block a lot easier. I am going to write in here the Reformation because I'm curious about how that would change their ideas around folklore like would that have an effect on it don't know so that's a question i'm asking myself oh what was the other thing i was going to look up because i was curious about it the moors so i'm going to write that in here too just the things that i'm not really sure about that i just want a little extra context because i don't know yet but i don't want to just jump to that and go down rabbit holes Okay, and last health. Medical knowledge was rudimentary with herbal remedies and superstitions common. I actually want to use this, herbal remedies and superstitions. So let's actually add this to herbs up here. I feel like that hit a lot of important notes on things that I needed to know for this story. So let's get moved on. This is location, this is time period. We're making good progress. The next important thing that I need to do some research on, folklore, because we're using a decent amount of that here. Tell me about the folklore. All I'm gonna say is that by doing these very specific questions, you're saving yourself so much time looking up all of these things. Um, and it's not just looking it up, but like, okay, I'm trying to figure out what elves are they specifically talking about, specifically this location, because there's lots of folklore from back then that, okay, you had in this area, they were called this, in this area, they were called that, and these were the beliefs about them, but they believed it different over here, and I just wanna know exactly this location, what would they have been told? What would they believe in? The most important one is the elves from the Elven Knight because he's gonna be our antagonist, our villain, essentially. Uh, the figure of the Elven Knight is a prominent example of elves in folklore. Elves were often depicted as supernatural beings with both benevolent and malevolent tendencies. They were associated with magic, enchantment, and otherworldly knowledge. Elves were believed to be beautiful ageless and possessing powers beyond human understanding. They could grant favors or curses and interactions with them were often perilous. So this is what I wanna use. I want there to be this like impending doom kind of feeling where, okay, this could be great. They're beautiful, they're ageless, they have this power and they can grant favors, but when you interact with them, it can often be perilous. Let's see, behavior. People believe the elves could steal away humans, especially children and young women. 
sometimes leaving changelings in their place. Protective measures included placing iron objects or certain herbs around cradles and homes. And that brings in the herbs play that I kind of want to have a little bit later. I don't know that I'll use any of these other characters or any of these other creatures. Definitely using the elves might use some others just for fun. Folkloric practices and beliefs. So herbs and charms. Various herbs like St. John's wort, yarrow, and yarrow, yarrow, and rowan uh, were believed to have protective properties against supernatural beings. Charms and amulets were also used. I'm thinking that I'm going to have a character that's like best friends with the main character who is very involved in these like folkloric practices and uses herbs all the time maybe that's like she has her own garden and she is constantly like hey you can't just carry around xyz herb that you have like that's gonna get you in trouble or you know just maybe she seems kind of like a conspiracy theorist and <laughs> the main character's like i oh, don't worry about it we don't have to it's not something we have to think about but you know she feels otherwise because she's seen proof that elves actually exist and some of these little people are causing trouble and she wants to keep her friends safe so that's something i'm kind of playing with conspiracy theorists theorist conspiracy i spelled it wrong conspiracy theorist about little people but see this is just how i spring into it and jump into it. i just want to know enough to know what's going on around them. How's the town gonna react to this? Will they be reacting to it? Will they care? Will they be interested in her experience with the elves or will she have to keep that a secret and not tell anybody that she's experiencing it? Um, all that kind of thing. Super interesting, love it. Okay, let's see. What else do I want here? Herbs, let's talk herbs. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and time each herb has its own traditional associations collective significance this is kind of what i'm looking for ritual and magic together these herbs were often used in various medicinal and magical practices their combined mention could imply a ritualistic or magical effort to achieve impossible tasks the recurring refrain from these herbs in scarborough fair serves to reinforce the mystical and enigmatic nature of the tasks and the relationship they enhance the sense of longing. I think I might use these as a concoction that's made to either attract love or ward off elves or the opposite. Uh, that could be like an interesting little mystical use, a little magical use in the story. I'm just gonna yellow this because it's kind of different. I will do this research later because I think it's important, but this is kind of where I go with it. I, I try to figure out all of the little things that I can use in it, how I'm going to apply it to my story. Anyway, hit the like button and subscribe and click the little bell icon. I want to see you around here. I want you to be here for this. Um, next video, I will probably have a project name for this project, or perhaps maybe I'll just call it Project Rosemary and Time. Let's do that. Come back, enjoy this experience with me, start on your own story. Now's a great time to do it. I will see you guys in the next video.